the Honorable Mayor. Now, Speaker, we all know that the governing party supports fraternal parties who deal with deviation from the party line using a combination of the midnight knock on the door and the gulag. We cannot help noticing that the new finance minister was not present to debate the revised fiscal framework, was not present to take questions during question time, was not present for the debate on the division of revenue, and is now not present to debate the tax bills in this parliament. We wonder whether we shouldn't be concerned, because the new finance minister seems to have disappeared after his deviation from the party line, calling for the shutdown of South Africa. Honorable Mainers. Speaker. Yes, ask Honorable, ask Honorable Mina to raise his head and amend the statements he just made Honorable because it will be deliberately misleading Honorable the people Mayor. of South Africa. I'm indebted to the member. I see that the Honourable Member has finally wandered into Parliament. Now, we are not surprised that the Minister disappeared from Parliament because we still do not have any answers about the new Minister of Finance's midnight meltdown on Twitter. The real question remains whether the new Finance Minister, who has a reputation for consuming vast quantities of good food, good wine and good cigars, was sozzled when he took to Twitter. The Minister's midnight meltdown was so serious that it culminated in a sit-down with the South African National Editors Forum. Speaker, the new Finance Minister comes across as a sophisticated version of Donald Trump, posting the first thing that comes to mind on Twitter. The Minister has done it again and appears to have liked a tweet by Black First Land First Stormtrooper Lindsay Marsdorp. The tweet takes a swipe at his cabinet colleague Praveen Gordon and was posted ahead of his appearance before the Zondo Commission. What compounds the embarrassment is that National Treasury is desperately trying to save the minister from himself by claiming that his account was hacked, which seems unlikely given the minister's track record on Twitter. Now, Speaker, we are here today to debate an increase in VAT from 14% to 15%. President Cyril Ramaphosa needed the money to play for a bloated cabinet, to bail out the South African post office, to bail out South African Express, and to bail out South African Airways, which means that the poor are effectively bailing out the ANC who have mismanaged this economy for the past decade. And that is why people who are battling to make ends meet and who are battling to put bread on the table are worse off. Today, the ANC, who claim to represent the poor, will vote yes to support an increase in VAT, which will make life harder for the poor. Worse, the SACP, who claim to represent the poor, will vote yes to support an increase in VAT, which will make life harder for the poor. That is why we must fight those who fight the poor, and that is why the DA will vote no and oppose an increase in VAT in South Africa. Speaker, in closing, we can only hope that the Minister apologises and is open and honest about the reasons for his midnight meltdown, and that he gets a grip and starts acting like a finance minister who is actually capable of dealing with the economic thank crisis you, in Honourable South Africa. Mayor. I thank you. Honourable Ndozi. Thank you very much, Speaker. It is really a shameful and sad day that when the ANC has mismanaged the economy, has looted, wasted and mismanaged public funds, 
It is workers, the poor, the students, the unemployed, who have to suffer a VAT hike. It is a 1% point increase but the real increase that is often hidden behind the 1% point is an actual increase in 6.5%. That is the real price the poor people are paying. The VAT increase is already having a serious impact on the price of food, transport, education, housing, and the overall standard of living. When the actual price of food decreased by non rand, because of the VAT, the gains were lost, and as a result, the net increase was over four rand. Companies who are well capitalized, making profits, enough profits to go on an investment strike by holding, holding billions in cash, are allowed to claim VAT. But people who face similar expenditures are not allowed to claim VAT. We reject VAT increase and will continue to challenge it. Not only do companies enjoy VAT claims, in addition to all incentives that only increase their prices, but their contribution to overall taxes also continues to decrease because of the lower corporate income tax rate, aggressive tax avoidance, and other illegal tax activities. The idea that more revenue will flow from investment, economic growth, and job creation is the clearest demonstration of the ANC naivety and lack of proper understanding of the scale of budget shortfalls. Here, we are not talking about the 54 billion that we are told SARS failed to collect. We are talking about the actual budget shortfalls if you are to deliver proper roads, houses, water, infrastructure, and schools to eradicate poverty in South Africa. A good example is the housing backlog with more than 2.2 million in the National Housing Needs Register and an average cost of RDP house being 160,000. It means that we need more than 370 billion yet, 370 billion, yet the Department of Human Settlement budget is only 34 billion. The same with roads infrastructure. We need no less than 375.4 billion to resurface and strengthen gravel. An expansion backlog, yet the department actual budget is only 50, 59 billion. If we continue to rely on taxation, especially taxing workers, the poor, the unemployed, South Africa is never in a position to eradicate poverty. The only way to eradicate poverty is through reform of monetary policy, but in the immediate, the government must establish a sovereign wealth fund and also leverage on the PIC assets strategically to inject cash into protected infant industries. Create a state-owned bank to leverage on the economy of scale to make it cheaper for government to transact. It is only then that we can start building sustainable revenue streams and work towards the creation of a much more equal and stable society. So we are here to unequivocally reject the value-added tax that has increased to affect the poor of our people. Thank you very much.